Hello everyone, this is Debbie Happy Cohen with Joy Based Living where we are here to empower your joy and help you take inspired actions every day. So I want to talk about double binds and how to actually transcend them. Um, I spoke in a couple of videos ago about double binds, but I didn't provide the solution. I didn't want to go, I wanted to provide the issue and the explanation about how double binds are used to um, keep a person confused so that they can be controlled and manipulated. And I use the metaphor of a drunk gazelle or a bald tire. That a double bind is when no matter what you do, you can't win. So um, systematic ambient abuse and coercive control, controllers or abusers, use double binds to keep their victims or targets confused because as long as the person is confused they're going to not leave. The lion will be able to eat the gazelle and if you don't want to be a gazelle here's how you can transcend the double bind. Now I'm speaking about this post trauma. If you are inside of it, do your best to find your truth and to empower yourself. Get support. So I'm going to give you this way to transcend double binds and I'm also aware that if you're in such an abusive environment, it can be easy to get sucked back in. You're going to have to stand stronger. You're going to have to do more work to stay sober. So here it is. So I'm going to give you an example because I think it'll explain it better that way. I shared about the example about wanting to send a birthday card to somebody but feeling torn about it because this is somebody who's generally not happy. and. I have felt that no matter what I did, they're not going to be happy. And um, I, I came to a place of recognizing that this person is inside of a very abusive relationship. And I have come far enough that I don't like playing pretend with people anymore. Like, oh, let's send a birthday card. Everything is happy, happy, fine, fine. Like. You know, I know my middle name's Happy, so this is like really interesting, kind of weird in my mind. Um, <laughs> so, and that was my middle name from birth. So anyway, it's kind of interesting. So the double bind was leading me to feel a lot of guilt. And I was kind of stuck in the feeling of guilt. So one of the first things that I did was, well, one of the first things I did was I kept dissociating and I kept avoiding the double bind experience. So I just kept delaying and delaying sending the birthday card. And then I called a friend because I was like, I keep dissociating. I find distractions. I need music. I need to go write another blog post. I need to call the, do something else, call a friend for different, re you know, like I, I have 20 million other things that come up, which is a sign to me that I am an emotional flashback and I am not in control, the flashback is in control, and I keep dissociating. So I called a friend who is uh, literate in this kind of conversation, uh, but prior to calling her, I looked on my feelings chart and realized that I, I kept feeling guilt and powerless over mm -hmm. the experience of the double bind and over the guilt. While I was on the phone with her, we got interrupted because I forgot somebody was coming over. I think that there are manifestations of dissociation sometimes that like, I think they're just so funny. Like, oh, interesting, it happened at that moment, right when we're just up. I turned the conversation over to her and said, what do you think? And then this person pulls up. It's like, oh, interesting, happy D, interesting. Well, the person who came over happens to be a very, very, very dear friend who's like 80 years old and who is, a sharpshooter for truth 
and one of the most intuitive people I have ever met in my life. And I told her about my double bind experience. And it was like sitting with Yoda. Um, she goes, she, just straight flat out, she goes, do you love this person? And I said, yes, I do. And she said, then send the card. And I was like, yeah, that's it. That's it. I like, I love, I love the cliche, love is the answer. Like, I really do love that cliche, but sometimes it pisses me off because I'm like, you know, it sounds a little airy fairy and like, how do you put that to practical use? And she just brought it right to the forefront. Like, yes, I think we need people of wisdom in our lives like that. I think everyone does. I think every one-year-old does, every five-year-old does, every 20-year-old does, every 50-year-old does, every 80-year-old, every 80-year-old even does. We need people with wisdom. And she receives my wisdom as well. And then she gets all excited because when she's speaking wisdom, I write it in my journal. Um, and she's like, you're writing down my words. I was like, yeah. Um, so then I applied that to, you know, do I put the SH word on the cover of this upcoming ebook I'm writing that I'm really excited about? It's like ABCs of healing from trauma, from hidden emotional abusive trauma. And, um, and the SH word came up and I've been determined to put more humor into this whole healing process. Like I'm, I'm on the other side. I'm like, yes, go to bring laughter to this thing already. Um, and, and I was afraid of like, not so much offending people, but you know, if I want to make a difference and people don't want to share it because that has the SH word, am I, am I, um, sabotaging my intention? And so I applied my friend's question to me, you know, do you love this person? Yes, I do. Send the card. And I thought, why am I writing this ebook? Why do I do all this work? Why do I do all this coaching that I do that I'm so on fire about? The truth is that I love humanity. I love people. I love seeing people light up. I love people seeing people be set free. And not so much in a queer eye for the straight guy kind of way, even though I, I do like that show. I, I like that. I think there's a place for that. Um, but a lot of times that can be more external and the person can go back to how they were before. I mean, on the internal level, like I will never forget this transcendent transcendence of double bind through love. And if I love humanity, then I need to be myself. So another old core false belief that goes to the wayside in this process is in order to be loved, I must conform or in order to be loved, I must produce value. I'm not really so much a conformist. I'm more of a rebel. Um, but inside of the belief that uh, producing equals value equals love. That is a form of conformity to um, an abusive environment. So it's not the true me. Uh, love should not be traded. Love is not a trade. It, it can't actually be traded. It's not love if it's traded. So for me to love is for me to say, this is the spunky me. This is where you're going to get the most out of me. And who knows, maybe a little comedian will start like appearing um, as I proceed and talk, use the SH word in this next project. So um, there was a transcendent thing. And, and there was something else that is too private for me to share. Um, but someone really stood for me in a way that I didn't expect them to. Um, and it took me a long time to take it in and I kind of had a meltdown 
when when I saw that they were really standing for me and I felt that person's love for me they didn't have to do it at all at all they could have very much gotten away with not being there and it would have been appropriate for them not to like like I wouldn't have held it against them at all and so um I know that might not make sense completely because I didn't give you all the details, but that's okay. I think you got the idea. You can transcend double binds with love. If you love somebody, and that includes yourself, you think about the double bind that you're in and just go, you know, do I love this person? Based on that love, what would I do? Just make sure that your love isn't being confused with trauma bond. There are abusers I've had in my life that for a long time I was like, I know they love me, I know they love me, I definitely love them, I care about them. And um, the truth of the matter was they just wanted to um, suck me dry. And I had to really face the music that that's not love. So, um, okay, this video went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but I, I feel complete about it. I feel like if you're facing issues with double binds, I looked up, things around that and I, I couldn't find a lot of really good useful information so I wanted to provide this for you. Thank you for listening and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Keep embodying and empowering your joy and keep taking inspired action. You are worth it and the world needs you. Bye for now.